Hi everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to create multiple configurations of Reaper. Um, this way you can have one version that has one setup, another version that has the Kohler cl classical setup, another version that has another setup. And indeed you can actually run them all at the same time and switch between them in memory using application switching. So first I'll start by uh, creating a, a, a plain setup. We do this using what um, is called on the Reaper site is called portable installs, but that really doesn't have any meaning. Um, what it basically is, is that the Reaper application, when it starts up, looks for a reaper.ini file in the same directory with the app. If it doesn't find it there, it goes to a standard place called, called your Reaper resource directory and sets up the files there. But if it does find the Reaper any file in the same directory with the app, it sets it up there. So the normal place for the Reaper application to set up the files is in, is in your Reaper resource directory, which is here. It's under your username, library, application support, and then Reaper. That's the normal place. So if I run Reaper, from the application folder, it's going to look in this directory for all the configuration files. However, if I make a copy of the Reaper app, let's say I make a copy of it and put it here. So I put the Reaper app in this folder called Reaper Plane. And maybe just to, so I can know which is which, I'll rename the app Reaper 64 space plane. Okay. Now, if I put a file in there, uh, an empty file called reaper.ini, it will then put all the files in here when it starts up. So to do that, we run the terminal application. Very simple. Um, where is the terminal application? Here it is, terminal app. And um, let's create a new window in terminal. Let me put it over on this screen here. Okay, I accidentally started this. Let me close that. So there's the terminal app. And now what we're going to do, get this in place, is I'm going to set the directory to this directory. That, that's the Reaper plane directory, which you can see over here. So to do that, I come into the terminal window. I type CD space. And then I just drag the Reaper plane folder over here. That puts its directory specification there. And then I hit carriage return. Okay, so now I'm set for this directory. Now I just type a very simple command called touch, T-O-U-C-H, touch, and then space, reaper.ini. And when I hit the return, you can see it created a file called reaper.ini there. Okay, that's just an empty file now. Now, when I run this application here, the Reaper 64 Plane app, it's going to find that file, and, and as a result, it will create all the other Reaper configuration files in this same directory. So I'm going to start it up here. Double click. You see Reaper starting. And you see the, the directories and the data being created here by Reaper. That's all the default setup data for Reaper. So Reaper is starting up. Um, the only other thing it's going to ask for is my license file. So I'll make a copy of my license file once it finishes starting up here. Uh, takes a while to scan the VSTs. OK, once it's done scanning the VSTs, you're done. It says you haven't selected an audio device. I won't do that right now. Click No. And now it's asking for my license. So I'll import. I have a license file over here. If I had put that in there to start, it would have been OK. But I'll just say Import the license key. And I'll find it in one of these other directories that, that I had it. Um, it's called uh, it's called reaper-license.rk. If you have a license, there it is. And that's it. And it just copied that into this directory over here. You can see it there now. So now I'm all licensed, and I'm up and running. So this is now a completely vanilla version of Reaper. And whenever I start up this application here it's going to run this version of Reaper. Now I can customize that all I want. 
Now let's say I want to have another version of Reaper. So right, I'm going to keep that running, but I'm just going to hide it in the background. Okay. Now let's say over here I have an, another version of Reaper with lots of configurations already set up. I, I called that Reaper 64 old. When I double click that, it launches a new copy of Reaper. <clears throat> that one already has the license file there and it's already scanned the VSTs previously so it doesn't take as long. So there we go, that one's running now. So now I have two versions of Reaper running. You can see right here, there's Reaper 64 old and there's Reaper 64 plain. Okay, now I'll hide those. And then in this directory is where I had stored the, I had installed the Kohler classical file. So that's where the regular Reaper that's in the Applications folder will access this. So I'll start up that now. So this is the this is going to run the Reaper that's in the Applications folder. I run that, and that's licensed already, and has the Kohler Classical license as well. So it starts up, and you can see it has Kohler Classical 2.0M running already. So I now have three versions of Reaper running. I've got Reaper 64, the one with Kohler Classical, Reaper 64 Plain, a plain vanilla version, and Reaper 64 Old, another configuration of Reaper. I can just switch between them like I would switch between any apps. So you can run as many versions of Reaper as you want with completely independent configuration setups. You can set up the menus, the keyboard, everything. And that's the best way to handle it if you have multiple setups that you want to deal with. That's all there is to it. Thanks for listening today.